Combination of uh, thin lenses in contact. Consider two thin lenses of focal length f1 and f2 are placed in contact with each other as shown in the figure. O is a point object placed on the principal axis. I is the final image formed by lens combination. I1 is the image formed by first lens. This serves as the virtual object for second lens and forms the final image I as shown in the figure. Here it is an object and uh, the first lens makes its uh, image at uh, I1 and uh, this uh, acts as a virtual object for this lens and this lens finally makes its uh, uh, image at uh, I. So this will be the object in this sense and this will be the final uh, image distance and this is this is the uh, image distance for this lens so now we have lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u equals to 1 by f question 1 for the image formed by first lens we have v equals to v equals to v1 and u equals to u u equals to u and f equals to f1 using in equation 1 we have 1 by v1 minus 1 by u equals to 1 by f1 for the image formed by second lens we have v equals to v and u equals to v1 and f equals to f2 f is here to f2 using in equation 1 we get 1 by v minus 1 by v1 equals to 1 by f2 adding 2 and 3 we get 1 by v minus 1 by u equals to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 consider two lens system is shifted by a single lens of focal length f such that the image is formed at v distance when object is placed at, at u distance then we can write 1 by v minus 1 by v u equals to 1 by f equation 5 so from 4 and 5 1 by f equals to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 where f is the effective focal length of the combination so if there are several lenses is contact then their effective focal length is given by 1 by f equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 plus 1 by f3 plus dash 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 dash. In terms of effective power of combination P equals to P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus dash 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 dash. Now magnification and combination is given by m equals to m1 into f2 into m3 dash 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 dash. Now prism. It is a homogeneous transparent refractive medium bounded by at least two non-parallel plate surfaces inclined at some angle. This is shown a prism. This is called equilateral prism because all the angles are same. And this is these are and these are the refracting surface. If these and these are refracting surface, then this will be called the angle of prism. This is also behaving like a prism. This is also behaving like a prism. This is also like a right angle so solace prism is this. There may be different types of prism. Now angle of deviation, the angle between the emergent ray and the direction of incident ray is called the angle of deviation. Here this is the situation shown when a ray passes through the prism, it deviates from its original path. This is shown. The light has original path like this, but after uh, but after uh, emerging from the prism, it bends towards in this direction. So then we, so the angle between original light 
line of incident light and the emergent emergent ray is angle of deviation this is angle of deviation and this is the angle of bridge determination of angle of deviation consider a prism abc array of light pq incident obliquely on the prism obliquely means not perpendicularly rs is the emergent ray this is the rs is the emergent ray the angle of prism is a because this surface this surface is ref, uh, uh, refracting so this will be the angle of prism because light uh, incident on this surface and passing through this surface so this angle will be angle of prism in the quadrilateral a q n r a q n r angle a this angle plus angle a q n this angle this whole angle a q n plus angle q n r plus q n r this angle plus angle n a n r a n r a this is those whole angle must be equal to 360 degree this is by angle a plus 90 because this this whole is 90 plus angle qnr plus 90 equal to 360 hence angle a plus angle qnr equals to 180 equation 1 now from triangle qnr this is the triangle qnr if consider this angle is r1 and this angle is r2 then r1 plus r2 plus qnr must be equal to 180 degree hence uh, this imply qnr equals to 180 minus r1 plus r2 question 2 using 2 in 1 we get cone a plus a 180 minus r1 plus r2 equals 180 this gives uh, cone a equals to r1 plus r2 so this angle is equal to r1 plus r2 in triangle QMR, this is QMR, M is the exterior angle, this angle is exterior, hence delta 1 plus delta 2 equals to delta because this is exterior angle, so this angle plus this angle will be this angle, so delta 1 plus delta 2 is equal to delta, this implies delta equals to i minus r1 because this whole will be i so i minus r1 will be delta 1 and here this whole will be uh, this whole angle will be uh, equivalent to this whole angle uh, Uh, this whole angle which is e okay delta equals to i minus r1 plus e minus r2 now this implies delta equals to i plus e where i is the angle of resistance and e is the angle of emergence uh, minus of r1 plus r2 or delta equals to i plus e minus a because r1 plus r2 is equal to a so we have get the angle of deviation as i plus e minus a if we draw a plot between the angle of deviation and angle of incidence as shown in the figure angle of deviation and angle of incidence as shown in the figure this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of deviation Similarly, it found that when angle of deviation is minimum, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of emergence. That is when delta equals to delta m, that is minimum angle of deviation, then i equals to e. This is the point where i equals to e. So, for us now, from a snail's law at q and 
आर स्लेंस लॉ एट क्यू एंड आर एन वन साइन आई इक्वल्स टू एन टू साइन आर टू एंड एन टू साइन आर टू इक्वल्स टू एन वन साइन ई इक्वल्स टू एन वन साइन आई फ्रॉम वन Using a and b, n two sine r two equals to n two sine r one. This implies sine r two equals to sine r one. Hence, r two equals to r one. Equation six. Now, using five in c, uh, four, we get delta m equals two i minus a, or i equals to a plus delta m by two. Equation seven. Using six in three, we get Angle A equals to R1 plus R2, A equals to R2 plus R2. Hence, R1 equals to R2 equals to A by 2. Question 8. Again, from Snell's law, at Q n1 sine I equals to n2 sine R1. This imply n1 sine A plus delta m by 2 equals to n2 sine A by 2. This imply n2 by n1 equals to sine A plus delta m by 2 divided by sine A by 2. Or this imply n2 n equals to sine A plus delta m by 2 by sine A by 2. Now for a small angle of prism that is a thin prism, delta m is also very small, and we get n two one equals to sine a plus delta m by two divided by sine a by two equals to equivalent to a plus delta m by two by a by two equals to a plus delta m by a, or equals to one plus delta m by a equals to this imply delta m by a equal to n two one minus one. Hence, yes, delta m equals to n to one minus one into a. This relation is also true for deviation by an angle of incidence of prism angle is a small. That's delta equals to n to one minus one into a. Now dispersion by a prism. The phenomenon of a splitting of light into its component color when it passes through a glass prism is called dispersion of light. This is the prism when white light passes through it. It disperses into its constituent colors from red to blue, and this is called dispersion of light. Cause of dispersion: Why dispersion occurs when light passes through prism? Cause of the dispersion: Why light passes through prism? Uh, why light uh, disperses when passes through prism? According to Cauchy's formula, refractive index that is n equals to a plus b by lambda square plus dash dash dash, where n b are constant. We can take n proportional to one by lambda square. The wavelength of different color light is different. The wavelength of red is maximum. And for violet is minimum. That is lambda r greater than lambda v. This implies one by lambda v greater than one by lambda r. This implies one by lambda v square is greater than one by lambda r square. This implies thus from this relation, n v that is refractive index for violet is greater than refractive index for red. For a small angle, we have delta equals to n minus one into a deviation equal to. Now n v is greater than n r, so n v minus one will be greater than n r minus one. Now this implies n v minus one into a will be greater than n v minus one into a, so delta v will be greater than delta r. So mathematically, it is shown that deviation of violet light will be greater. Then the deviation of red light, that is deviation of violet color, is most and red color is least. Rainbows. It is formed due to dis dispersion of light, suffering refraction and reflection. 
in the droplet present in the atmosphere. Thus, rainbow is the combined effect of refraction, reflection, and dispersion of light. Now, primary rainbow. It is formed due to two refraction and one reflection of light incident on the droplet of water. This is shown in it is in a figure. This is one one is refraction. Uh, there are two refraction, one at this place and another at this place, and here is reflection. It is called primary rainbow. Now, as shown in the figure, the red light from drop one, red light, and violet light from drop two reach the observer eye. The violet from drop one and red light from drop two are directed at level above or below the observer. Thus, the observer sees a rainbow with red color on the top and violet on the bottom. This is the primary rainbow. Now, secondary rainbow, it is formed due to the two refraction and two internal reflection inside the water drop. It is a four, four step, a step process. The intensity of light is reduced at the second reflection and hence the second rainbow is fainter than the primary rainbow. The order of color is reversed in it. This is shown here. Uh, why this, this light is coming like this and here it is divided into from red to violet. Again, it is uh, coming like this and divided into red to violet. And so we see the ice is this color. So violet will be on upper side and red will be on lower side. Now a scattering of light. Relay scattering. According to it, a scattering proportional to 1 by lambda to the power 4. Blue color of a sky. We have the white light is made of seven color, uh, same of same se seven wavelength color that is deep gray. Uh, violet is of uh, four thousand angstrom and red is of seven thousand angstrom. Violet has minimum wavelength and red has maximum wavelength. Due to lesser wavelength. Lesser wavelength, the scattering of high load, indigo and blue color is more, our eye is more sensitive to the blue color, so generally clear sky looks blue. Clouds looks white. A scattering depends upon the size of the scatterer, that is molecule particle size. Consider the size of the scatterer is A, then for A very very less than lambda. We have relay scattering and for a very very greater than lambda, relay scattering does not occur. Now the all wavelength of light are scattered equally. Thus cloud which have water drop let that is its diameter is very very greater than lambda as scatters all wavelength equally so cloud looks white. Red is appearance of the sun at sunset and sunrise. This is the case of uh, sunset or sunrise and this is the case of overhead sun that is sun is directly overhead and this distance from this figure it is clear that the x1 distance is greater than x2. At sunset or sunrise the sun's ray have to pass through a large distance in the atmosphere. Most of the blue and other shorter wavelengths are removed by scattering. The least scatter light reaching our eyes, therefore the sun looks reddish because uh, uh, we see that scattering is directed to 1 by lambda star. So, which have uh, a smaller lambda will scatter more and which have uh, a greater lambda will scatter less. So, red color has 
greater lambda so it will scatter less and will reach to the our eye so it will look reddish but in the case of then uh, sun is directly overhead it not uh, we see the same color because uh, light uh, has to not traverse more much much more distance in the uh, environment 